Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we're talking about the brand new 2021 Dodge Ram, commonly referred to as a fifth gen Dodge Cummins. But more importantly, we're talking about the factory VGT turbocharger that comes equipped on that truck. And why? We would take this turbocharger off and upgrade to what we refer to as a Borg Warner S467 second gen swap. We're talking about turbos, let's dive into it. First up, we're gonna be talking about the factory VGT turbocharger. What is VGT? Variable Geometry Turbocharger. What's that mean to you guys? That this turbo is actually electronically controlled. To go one step further, whenever you give the truck throttle, this actuator will change the vane positions. It has a gear in it. It will change the position to either increase or decrease airflow to the exhaust housing which if you speed it up, you're gonna bring more air in through the compressor and it will produce more boost pressure, which makes more power. Next subject, how does this turbocharger stay cool? Well, by two things. All turbochargers have to get fed oil. That's a period. You cannot have a turbocharger that does not get fed oil. The engine provides the oil, comes in here, goes out the bottom. Everything stays happy. Next thing. This factory turbocharger actually gets fed engine coolant. Why? Because it has an electronic actuator on it that has to stay cool. You can see here, the actuator's there. You can see the coolant port there. That's perfect. But they want to keep this dude alive. We like that. Next subject. Where does this guy get fed exhaust gases? Right here. You can see. So we would refer to this as more so of a T3 flange, not a T4 like the S400s. It looks a little choked down, but that's the reason why this factory turbocharger spools really fast. But one of the downfalls is extreme high drive pressure when we're making more power out of it. So we really don't like that, but it is what it is. Next subject, everybody wants to know about this. This is well, the biggest thing about this turbocharger. How big is that compressor wheel that pulls in all that factory air? Well, let's pull that cover off and measure it. So we've got the cover off. This compressor wheel is 58.5 millimeters. This VGT turbocharger, we're gonna brag on it. It's very impressive for the size of it. We've seen over 500 rural horsepower, but the downfall comes when we wanna make over 500 rural horsepower, and we're beating this thing up, and it just cannot do it and maintain a healthy engine. We'll break a shaft, better yet, we could blow a head gasket. So if you're like me, you wanna raise the bar. You want to make a healthier truck, but you want to make over 500 rural horsepower. You want to do it in a most efficient way, but with some air to go further in the future. I bet you're wondering the same thing as me. How would that truck perform with an S400, but better yet, a 67 millimeter S400? That's what we're talking about now. So we're talking about the S400 turbocharger. You can look at the size difference. This S400 is way bigger than the factory VGT. So you would think this turbocharger, we would refer to it as lazy or most people would because it's a 67 millimeter, right? Well, we think it's a perfectly sized turbocharger. Let's dive deeper. The factory one has the electronics on it to spool down low. That means if you're pulling a load and you need to pull through it, get around someone, this turbocharger should be superior over a fixed vein. Fixed vein means this, that you have to have the fuel to spool it. If you don't, this thing is and will be lazy. That means when you go to pass someone, this thing's gonna bog down and not go anywhere. But the fifth gen Dodge Cummins actually has more compression than the previous years, 13 to 18s. They're around 17.51, don't quote me on that, but should be close to that. And then the fifth gen is over that. That means the factory engine actually has more air to push this turbocharger to make more power on its own. And the factory fueling has, has way more potential than what this factory turbocharger can even do. So that's where we get into why we're upgrading. This is a great, and it's factory location, factory power, but we're going up. 
We know that engine is capable of way more and a 67 millimeter turbocharger, in our opinion, is almost perfect for drivability, longevity, and just overall a better engine. Now let's take off that cover, measure it, let you guys take a look at it. Sixty seven point four millimeters. This billet forced induction turbocharger versus the factory fifty eight point five. There's no comparison. You can look this billet compressor wheel is way taller and of course sixty seven versus a fifty eight point five. We rate this turbocharger at eight hundred rural horsepower. The factory one a little over five hundred and this dude becomes inefficient. So guys that's comparing apples to apples on the compressor wheel. But what's the most important thing about these two turbochargers is what's in this exhaust housing. So why is the exhaust housing, which holds the turbine wheel, the most important and crucial part about making efficient power when we're after those big numbers? Factory turbocharger does a great job. 70 millimeters in diameter, we've got an open scroll housing. We have all the exhaust gases coming at this turbocharger at one time, spinning the turbine wheel and making power should be the most efficient way, but we beg to differ. A twin scroll setup is far superior. Here's why. You've got a divided housing. You've got the front three cylinders hitting it and the back three cylinders hitting it. They're not colliding. It's just like water. They're flowing to it in the most efficient, smoothest way, making maximum efficient power. Guys, if we messed you up, confuse you between the two, we're gonna roll the engine in, we're gonna dissect it so you get a better visual. So we've got the factory exhaust manifold bolted to the cylinder head. Down here is where your factory turbocharger would bolt to it. We've got to spool that turbocharger. How do we do that? Each one of these ports, when you inject fuel inside the cylinder, creates combustion, which creates compression, runs through these ports, runs to the turbocharger, and makes it spool. You have to do that in a sequence. You would think it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not actually. Here's how it goes. One, five, three, six, two, four. You will actually see the twin scroll in the S400 turbocharger is far superior because when cylinder one and cylinder five are firing, they're working with each other, not against. We refer back to the water. We do not want the water to collide inside the cylinders. We want it to rush to the turbocharger as fast as possible and work together. That's why a twin scroll setup is far superior over an open scroll setup like on the factory design. So we just came off the exhaust manifold. We talked about an open scroll housing versus a twin scroll housing. Inside those housing, we have an exhaust wheel. This one is an 83 millimeter. We refer to it as the turbine wheel. The turbine wheel is everything in a turbocharger plus everything in an engine because if you have an itty bitty tiny turbine wheel, you can't get the exhaust gases out to make more power. It actually is the restriction point in the whole system. This one is way bigger than the factory one, an 83 millimeter. We can get exhaust gases in up to 800 rural horsepower and get them out. So if you're like me, I bet you're wondering, how does this turbocharger actually perform in that truck behind me? So we came in today pretty hot and heavy, beating up the BGT turbocharger. Why? It just really cannot get the job done when we're wanting to make 500 plus rural horsepower. Drive pressures through the roof, this turbocharger becomes super inefficient. But if you're the guy, you want to keep all your factory components on there, you want it to drive nice out on the street, and you want to retain your exhaust brake, this is a turbocharger for you, but it's pretty boring to me. Now, if you're the enthusiast that wants to make bigger power, you just want to bolt this turbocharger on your truck, you want to see big power. This is the turbocharger for you, the S467. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no way we're going to put a 67 millimeter on that brand new 21 Dodge Ram with the factory fueling. Should spool really bad, right? Well, this is where you're going to want to tune in because next week we're coming back with our second gym swap. That truck's gonna be on the dyno. 
let's compare the two. See you next week here at Point Blank Performance. So guys, make for sure you tune in next week here at Point Blank Performance. That truck's gonna be on the dyno making power. Why won't you start? Start. Give it a second. I fucked it up.